All right, chemistry. Welcome to chemistry for May 8th. Should be Friday if I'm doing math right, but who knows if I'm doing math right at this point. Um, today, we're going to talk some more about our Unit 9 stuff. We're kind of wrapping it up, you know. Um, next week is a normal week of class where you have some videos and homeworks. And then the following week is sort of a wrap-up week. You know, it would be sort of finals time, but we're not going to give a comprehensive final exam. Um, so there will be some opportunity for you to turn in um, anything that's missing because it will be due at the end of that week. Um, and then there will be a little sort of wrap-up thing for us to do. So you've got three normal classes, including this one, and then two sort of not normal classes to wrap up the year. So we're getting to the end of it, which means if you haven't done your homeworks, uh, do them, turn them in this week, next week, get it done. Um, you know, whatever it is, May 23rd or something like that, it's due, it's due, and it's done. And you get a grade, right? So get them done. It's not hard. You know, many of the homeworks are one, two, three, four questions long, right? Five to 15 minutes. So shouldn't be too much of a problem, even if you have five or six of them to do. Could probably knock it out in a couple hours, even watching the video. So we're going to go ahead today and talk some more about dilutions of solutions. Um, we talked about it briefly sort of at the beginning of April, which is weird because it kind of feels like yesterday, but that was a month ago. Um, so we're going to review sort of some of this dilution of solution stuff um, because it's relevant for the the last stuff we're going to do. Um, you can look forward to next week on having a little mini quiz involving this solution dilution stuff and another little mini quiz over some other topics we've talked about. So you'll have a normal homework today. Next week you have two mini quizzes. Now the mini quizzes just mean uh, same format as the homework. You just don't get to redo them. right? I mean instead of Oh, I got this wrong. Whoops, let me redo it. It's just how oh, you get one attempt. That's it. That's the only difference. All right. Um, just to sort of gauge how much you learned throughout this quarantine time without trying to figure out a whole test given online because that'd be silly. The mini quizzes will be um, open book, open note, whatever, right? So whatever good notes you took, you know, you can use them on the test. Um, whatever homeworks you did, you can use those to help you, those mini quizzes. So Shouldn't be too hard. I wouldn't stress out about it, but uh, you're going to have to get them done. Uh, so do this. It'll help prepare you for Wednesday. Um, when we talk about diluting solutions, you can use any of these concentrations, um, but probably molarity. All right. Molality, we've used a little bit with boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. Um, Freezing point depression is especially interesting with molality because you can calculate, you know, how much salt do you have to put on the road to make the ice melt, that sort of stuff, right? And, and uh, industrial engineers and civil engineers, those kind of people do that sort of calculation uh, for cities and melting roads in Iowa, right? So molality is interesting and useful. The other three really aren't. Molarity, however, is still the most common. And when we talk about diluting solutions, we're only going to do molarity. So... Let's give an example here, all right? So, when it comes to the dilution of molar solutions, remember you have a mini quiz on this on Wednesday, so I'll write this down. Molarity is M, volume is V, right? The symbol for molarity is a capital M, that's its symbol, right? Just like the symbol for inches is a lowercase I M, right? Symbol for molarity is capital M. Volume is capital V, not a lowercase V, that can mean something else, all right? So capital V. So M1 times V1 equals M2 times V2, meaning your initial molarity times your initial volume is equal to your final molarity times your final volume, right? If you have a molarity of 1 with a volume of 2, and you have a volume of 1, you'll get a molarity of 2, all right? Um, it's just a ratio. So the question which I would ask for this example is, what volume of 2 molar calcium chloride would you use to make 0.5 liters of 0.3 molar calcium chloride. All right? Well, as with all of these diluting molar solution problems, you have to first get your cat. Everyone knows cats are liquid. Can you calculate the volume of your cat? Yes, just put them in a box. So, you're going to do it with all these problems. 
right? There's four variables. There's M1, there's M2, there's V1, and there's V2. And you're always going to get three of them. So, the, I mean, this whole thing is just plug in three numbers, solve for X every time, all right? So in this case, all right, we have a two molar solution. Well, that's M1. It says what volume? So V1 is our X, because we, we don't know. It says what is it? Um, M2 is 0 0.3, we can tell because it's an M. And V2 is 0 0.5, we can tell because it's 0 0.5, right? So we have this, we plug all those numbers in. Now we have to solve for V1. All right, well, how do we solve for V1? Well, it's like, how do we solve for X? Well, you're going to have to divide both sides by 2 in order to get V1 by itself. So we do that. We take 0 0.3 times 0 0.5 divided by 2. That gives us V1. So V1 equals 0 0.7. 0 0.075 liters or 0 0.08 liters if you're rounding to two decimal places. All right, relatively straightforward. Um, that's the example. I mean, you just you have three numbers out of the four, you plug them and you solve for x. If you don't know how to solve for x, um, you just got to divide the number next to x, right? Divide both sides by that number to get x by itself. Now, y'all sophomores, juniors, and holy cow seniors should probably know how to solve for x in a single variable equation, but I don't want to presume. So here's a couple practice problems that should help prepare you for the mini quiz and for your homework today. So take a look at these two practice problems, pause the video, and solve them. Yes, pause the video. Pause the video and solve the problems. Okay. I'm sure you did it. I hope you did it. And I can check in my YouTube analytics if people pause at this point, so I'm going to know. All right, here's the answers. All right, for the first one, it's 0 0.08. We showed you how to do that. But for the second one, all right, you got 3 molar, what volume? Well, that means you're solving for V1. Then you have 1.25 molar, 0 0.3 liters. So 3 times X equals 0 0.3 times 1.25, meaning x equals 0 0.3 times 1.25 divided by 3. x equals 0 0.13. All right? You just need any old crappy calculator to do that, right? And so that's all we're doing. That's it. That's diluting molar solutions. All right? A um, little bit shorter video, but your homework is going to have a couple problems on it. So what you're going to want to do is go to On Campus, click on Assignments, and find your homework 458. All right? It's going to have a due date on it of next Wednesday. The homework's actually going to be open a little bit longer, all right, um, because I've had some issues and you've had some issues where if the homework's due on the due date, it's hard for students to get back in um, if they missed it or redo it. So it, it'll have a due date. The due date on the title is the due date. It'll go in as missing if it's not due by that due date, but um, it'll actually be open for a little bit longer just in case um, you mess it up and have to redo it or you miss it, that sort of thing. All right, so take a look on On Campus for your homework. That's it for today. And uh, I'll see you for your last two sort of normal classes next week.